Um, I'm really excited about what's happening in the world now because it gives us an opportunity to understand prophecy. And because most people, they have a very limited understanding of what prophecy is. Most people think prophecy was some sort of vision, enlightenment, some sort of wisdom that was downloaded thousands of years ago that's going to tell us about what's going to happen in the future. That is one form of prophecy, but what makes the Torah's wisdom divine is that the text itself is speaking to us right now. It's like a different level of prophecy. It's not something that was told to us so many years ago that's foretelling the future, but if your eyes are open, then the actual text of what we read every week speaks directly to us every single week. Sometimes it'll speak to you and your wife or you and your husband or you and your family or just you and your own personal life, but very often it will speak to the entire world. And now imagine there's one text that's being read every week around the world and more and more believers are joining into the Torah cycle. And so all of the people that love the Torah are reading the same message every single week. So the Torah portion that's coming up right now is in Exodus chapters 38, Pekude. I want to open it up just to verse 26 here and let's read it together. So this is talking about the Machatzit HaShekel. It's talking about what it will look like when we collect the money from the people. And it says a becca for each man, a half shekel according to the shekel of, of the sanctuary. For everyone included in the numbering from 20 years old and above for 603,550 men. Meaning they took an exact amount of half shekels from each men, but in the right angels that were military fit. And it was 603,000. 550. That's what we're reading literally right now in this week's Torah portion. Very good. And so I want to point out something right now that we're talking about these men that are from the ages of 20 to 60. It's military. It's also talking about building the Mishkan. It's talking about building the tabernacle, which is the representation of God returning to the land, returning to earth, having his presence dwell within us after the sin of the golden calf. And so I want to point something out here that Tahila pointed out to me, and she got it from this website called worlddata.org. Can we put the screenshot up on the thing? Thank you very much. And so here we have it. This is the geography of Ukraine, and this is what it says. This You can check this up on yourself, worlddata.info. Europe, Ukraine, you can see it right there. That's the link. Ukraine is a country in Eastern Europe at the Black Sea. The land has a total area of 603,000 550 square kilometers. Now, I just want you to just let's let that sink in for a second, because the chances that the Ukraine would be exactly 603,550 kilometers, exactly, we're reading that portion of the Torah right now, exactly as Russia is invading Ukraine right now, all of this is happening because the Torah portion is speaking to us right now. We don't need a spice cart to fall out of the sky. We have literally the word of God that's speaking to us saying, I want you guys to know the world may look chaotic. It may look like, oh my goodness, two years of a global pandemic. And now we're entering into the world war three. Like what's going on here? Everything just seems so random and so chaotic. But if your eyes are on the Torah portion and your eyes are understanding that prophecy is not just what was spoken then that's happening now, but the text itself is speaking to us right now, then we realize nothing here is by chance. Nothing here is a coincidence. 603,550, the chances that that would be in this week's Torah portion, and that is the exact kilometers of the the soldiers of the Ukraine that are fighting against the Russian invasion, it's just unbelievable. And so that everyone here should take a lot of strength, encouragement to know that um, nothing here is of chance. And here is a spice card given to us for those that are reading the Torah portion, that they should realize that just as the sanctuary was being built, so God's presence would return to the camp and dwell among us, so too, this is the beginning of a process 
that God's presence is on his way back to dwelling in Zion, to the clouds of glory will fill the temple in Jerusalem. World peace will come, even though it looks like world war is about to break out. No, no, no. Prophecy that's speaking to us right now is actually going to tell us world peace is on the horizon as well. And now I want to let another level of prophecy, very important, because you read the books of Isaiah, you read the books of Jeremiah, and it's like, what is going on? There's like so much discussions of the interpolitics, international politics, and they're talking about Assyria and Babylonia and Jerusalem and Egypt, and all the prophets are like giving their analysis of the global politics. And so the first message is, if you're a believer, don't think you can just lock yourself up on your farm in Colorado and just worry about you and your family and your homestead. No, you need to understand what's happening on a global level because God is on the move. Always pay attention to big global moves. The prophets are teaching us how to think. But not only that, it's teaching us how to interact with these nations. And I think that maybe perhaps this is the greatest lesson Israel can learn from what's happening in this Russia-Ukraine disaster right now. And there is a prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Can we put the verse up? It's chapter 36, verse 6. And here's what it says. Look, you are trusting in the staff of this broken reed, Egypt on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. Isaiah is very upset at the king of Israel, saying, how could you take a side here? Why would you all think you could rely on an external superpower to protect you? In fact, in modern Hebrew, when you say, I'm going to nishan on a kane ratzutz, you're like, I'm going to lean on this broken reed. That's like a modern way of saying exactly what the vision and the message of Isaiah was. Do not rely on anyone else other than you in any other thing other than God to solve your problems or to rely on anyone else when you are in need. We have only ourselves to rely on and only God to rely on. There is no one else. Don't think that America is going to come and save you with all of their promises and all of their wishes. Oh, well, you know what? Let's actually hear what the president of the United States said when Ukraine gave up their nuclear arsenal why a nation would give up their nuclear arsenal. Let's see what America promised. Ukraine chose to give up nuclear weapons when the former Soviet Union dissolved. Your decision has made the Ukrainian people, the American people, and the entire world much safer and more secure. I want President Kuchma and the Ukrainian people to know that the United States and the West will stay the course. The United you. States will stay the course with you, Israel. We will stay the course and watch you be destroyed. Just give up the Golan Heights to Syria. Just give up your highlands so ISIS are swimming in the Kinneret and having a mikvah in the Sea of Galilee. Why don't you just give up Judea and Samaria? The highlands, you don't need those mountains of Judea and the mountains of Samaria. Why not just leave Ben Gurion Airport at just like a gunshot range and leaving Israel with borders nine miles wide? Israel will be safer. America will be safer. The world will be safer. And America will be there to stay the course. I mean, what a lesson for us to learn. Do not lean on a broken reed. That's what Isaiah is teaching us. Israel can never rely on the promises of any other nation or any other people. All we can rely on is ourselves and on God. And that's prophecy that was given to us thousands of years ago that the wisdom is transcendent beyond time, space, and technology, and it's speaking directly, directly to us right now. And so I just want to point out one other thing, because the left in America and the left in the world, particularly really in Europe, they see themselves as so enlightened. They see themselves as woke, and we, who are, I mean, we're not awake. They're the awake ones. And I just, I just want to show you a clip here that I found from President Barack Obama, not that long ago, about the threats of Russia. A few months ago, when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not Al-Qaeda, you said Russia. In the 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back because you know, the Cold War has been over for 20 years. Who's okay, that did not age well for President Obama. And here's the issue. The secular modern world, they're both... Um, arrogant and stupid at the same time. 
And that's a really dangerous con like combination. They're so progressive and they're so woke and they're so enlightened and they think that they are so smart while all of these, I don't know, these people that believe in the Bible, they're just so primitive and superstitious. People who believe in old antiquated books, well, in that old antiquated book, which happens to be the greatest piece of literature ever written, and by far, and to date, there's no wisdom that I've ever encountered that even comes close to the wisdom of the Bible. There's an amazing verse there, and it's a deep wisdom. And it says, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Reshit chokma yirat Hashem. You see, the secular world, its stupidity is only matched by its arrogance, and that's what makes it so dangerous. There's no wisdom there because once you lose your moral grounding and you can no longer say good is good, evil is evil because you have no truth, because you have no God, then you have no wisdom. And so you look at the greatest wisdom ever transmitted to humanity and you ridicule it, ah, that antiquated old book of the Bible. There's no wisdom when you have no fear of the Lord. And instead of studying it, they ridicule it. And here we are watching this, a miracle, how this ancient text isn't just so wise. It is quite literally somehow communicating to everyone that's reading it right now. And so here at the fellowship, hundreds of families from 50 countries around the world gather here to connect to the heart of the land of Israel, to learn together, to get a deeper understanding and find more meaning in the Bible, a deeper understanding of prophecy. It's the deepest wisdom that has shaped the world as we know it. And our mission here is to bring the Torah to the world. So every person that joins the fellowship, that shares it with their inner circle is quite literally bringing the light to the nations. And that is nothing less than the mission of this generation, because if you are not awake now, that God is on the move and that the world is shaking and that you can literally hear the footsteps of Mashiach at the door, then you are not listening. And so this is a wake up call for everyone to take um, hope in the fact that every time a war erupts in the world, our sages say that the power of Mashiach is woken up. And so this is one step closer to world peace. And that's my Torah for today.